What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the rogue one, Gary Witta. Witta Wednesday. Got some trash in front of you, huh? I got some uh, delicious peanut M&Ms. First off, don't, don't applaud that, yeah, Barrett. Gary! Woo! My personal favorite. Fuck you, don't, Greg! Don't eat on a podcast, period, let alone eat trash. All right, come in here I'm gonna make a trash. Symbol- I'm, I'll make a symbolic point now by eating one, and then I'll... Okay, I'll, good, okay. That's fine. That's I fair. Feel, I I feel feel like we can't have another hobnob episode. I feel like <laughs> you, you and I ate like that sleeve that happen? of hobnobs. Were we eating hobnobs? <laughs> you brought the show? giant, like, cracker one, and we... Oh. The popper one, yeah, and we popped, and we just ate hobnobs all episode. And we weren't thinking about, like, uh, oh, what that means for the poor people listening yeah, people, at home. Yeah, people don't like that. All right, well, I feel like my point's been made. Your point's been made. Um, we will get to it, of course. Barrett's point's been made. The week of Barrett continues. Is it the year of Barrett? We'll find out. I guess he's got a great job. Yeah, Barrett's having kind of a moment right now. We'll get to yeah, that in a yeah. second. Because, of course, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, there's no time to waste. It's the week before E3. Kind of E3's already started. We'll talk about all of that, of course, and so much news for you. Stuff like, is Destiny 2 about to get cross-saved? Rocksteady isn't coming to E3. And all of Barrett Courtney's dreams are coming true. Because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every week, and a variety of platforms. We run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show. Patreon.com slash games. You can leave us your questions, comments, concerns, everything under the video game sun. Then tune in to watch us record it live on twitch.tv slash games. If you're watching live on twitch.tv slash games, why not click that follow button? Remember, during E3, we will be doing pre and post shows and watch alongs for each and every one of the major conferences. We will then be putting all of that up on youtube.com slash games as Gamescast podcast services. It's all over the place. If you go to twitter.com slash gameovergreggy right now, my pin tweet, of course, is the E3 schedule. Is it the pin tweet on Kind of Funny Vids, Barrett? Uh, yes, it should be. All, the, all of our schedule stuff is that pin tweet. Perfect. What did I say? I don't know. Okay, so you're, was, it should I'm, be. I'm, I'm confirming what you're saying. Right? Perfect. Uh, all right. So if you go to any one of Twitter's, you'll yeah. find all the E3 stuff we're coming to do because yes. there's a lot of E3 stuff coming starting as soon as well today with Pokemon Direct. If you count it, but uh, everything's happening. It's E3. It's crazy around here. Remember, we put this up later. YouTube.com/slash Kind of Funny Games, RoosterTeeth.com, and podcast services around the globe. Housekeeping for you. I just ran through and reminded you. E3 is next week. Technically, it starts. I would say already today. It started today, probably with Pokemon. I'm excited about this because, as, as you know. I'm used to kind of coming in on a Wednesday. Wednesday's yeah. my day. I get it. It's yeah. alliterative. It's all good. But it's midweek. It's typically kind of not the strongest news day. We put you there because you can carry a show. Even if nothing That's happened. That's what it is. Okay. I appreciate yeah, how you yeah. just spun that. That's, That's good. That's good Don't worry about it. You know what um, I mean? Yeah, I mean anyone can anyone can do it when there's chock full of exactly, news, right? right? When, when there's no news, how yeah. do you how do you do this? Yeah, exactly. How do you make I, I it, how you your, favorite, value? your favorite key, PC key, and you'd be like, oh, the escape but pri- key. But the week prior to E3, yeah, oh, every no. day raining, is, is is Christmas. It's day. It's raining jumpers right now, as Andy Cortez would say. Is that what he would say about basketball? It's raining jays. Sure, probably. Splash sister, Some, splash down. Something stupid like that. Something stupid like that, right? Yeah. He sucks. Uh, remember, E3's happening. It's already happening. There's a whole bunch of stuff happening. Today was Pokemon uh, Reacts. Tomorrow will be the Google Stadia Reacts. There's also a Destiny thing tomorrow we're not reacting to. Uh, Saturday is EA Play, and I'm hosting stuff there. Uh, Sunday is when the real conferences kick off and get going, and there's all the pre and post shows there, and then it goes on like that. But more importantly, on all of that, the Kind of Funny Games E3 Showcase is Monday, June 10th at 4.30 p.m. Pacific time. It's more than 60 indie games. You can watch it as we reveal it live as YouTube premiere, youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Again, Monday, June 10th, 4 30 p.m. Pacific time, 60 games. Got the first edit of it back today. A crisp 48 minutes so far. What was it last time? Uh, what well, we went, I think it was like uh, hour nine. Okay, so a little yeah. shorter this time. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we, it's E3. You got no time to waste. Back when we had your ear, we could bend it. In December, what did you have to do? Nothing. I mean, E3 that's, time, that's what I find always crazy about E3, about everyone releasing their games at E3. It's like, it, obviously, you, you get a large audience. That's but a siren over here. But you're also just part of this conveyor belt of stuff. It's like your EA or whoever yep. comes out and goes, here's all that stuff. And people go, yay. And then, okay, what? When's ne- the next, next thing? Yeah. Next. Yeah. Ne- yeah, okay, yeah, that's, yeah. that's five minutes old now. That's super old. What's the next new thing? Yeah. And so you it's it, it's a big battle for, for attention. Yeah. And we want all of your attention. 4.30. Are Monday. you just, are you, uh, what's your schedule like? Are you just blocked up like every oh, minute yeah. of every day? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's bad. No downtime? Dude, we, I'll show you the Thursday calendar um, I built for Tim and I for uh, Boots on the Ground E3. Yeah, yeah. It's on the hour. There's something going on until we go to bed. I, I remember it back in the many, many years ago when I used to cover E3 and prior to that even CES. Sure. I used to I used to work in video games before E3 existed. This is when, when you was, go to the it, press conferences, right, and chisel it into the rock, whatever they were saying. Yeah, that's right. I used to, yeah. You, we literally had like those hats with the little press. <laughs> uh, See, I got to break a story here. The old, what a scoop. And yeah. then, like, we, 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 <laughs> you run out of the conference we, 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 would all, we would all run to the little phone booths at the end of the hall <laughs> to, to, to phone in our copy. Yeah, yeah. Give me the copy desk. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it used to work. Um... 
And uh, I, but but I remember vividly those having those schedules of like nine thirty, ten, yeah. ten thirty, and and oftentimes it would be a race just to get out of the meeting. Yep. And then you and then your next thing's like in another hall. Yep. It's like racing across it's the fun. airport to it's get your awesome. flight. It's fun. For it's every a- single, I don't miss it at all. Ah, dude, it's it's fun. You still, it's fun you still to thrive on oh, it. I love it. I love E three, dude. You can, there's nothing like it. Running around, you're exhausted. It's not. Even, I mean, I can never complain because it's never as bad as it was when we worked at IGN. Right. Where it was like. You know, seven days in a row down there doing it all, running around, doing all that stuff. Yeah. Whereas now, you know, we we have the luxury of reacting to everything here, then going down for two days. It's so much easier. Right, right. Anyway, so housekeeping. Uh, thank you to our Patreon producers, Daniel Massey, Blackjack, Colton Yoder, and Mohammed Mohammed. Today we're brought to you by Hymns in Omaha Steaks, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Time <laughs> for some <laughs> news. <laughs> Six <laughs> items on the Roper Report. Up I'm very proud of you, Barrett, and I'm very excited to get to your news story, but we have a few more before then, all right? Number one is breaking right now from Jason over at Kotaku, as always. He is saying that Destiny 2 is coming to Stadia and getting cross save. You'll soon be able to transfer your Destiny 2 progress between multiple platforms, Xbox, PC, and the streaming service Google Stadia, on which the popular looter shooter will launch this fall. PlayStation 4 remains up in the air. Right now, switching from console to PC for Destiny 2 means starting from scratch, and there's no way to transfer as there's no way to transfer your characters or progress. But this morning, data miners discovered an image with cross save on it, getting fans hopes up that Destiny's online shooter will allow players to move characters across platforms soon. It's true, and it will be announced tomorrow during a Bungie live stream at 1 p.m. Eastern. We've heard all this from four people familiar with Bungie's plan, two of whom confirmed that Bungie will announce cross-save tomorrow during its Destiny 2 live stream. Those two also said the company wasn't sure whether PlayStation 4 would be a part of it. Parentheses, Sony didn't immediately respond to a request for comment. Google Stadia will definitely be part of this, though. What we've heard from five sources, a combination of plugged-in tipsters and developers, is that Destiny 2 will be one of the big games available on Google's new streaming platform. We also expect uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint and a few other big games to get announced for Stadia. Of course, back to Greg here, uh, the Destiny live stream tomorrow before that is the Google Stadia stream in the morning as well. Uh, Jason goes on in his article, of course, which you should all check out at Kotaku and give him love on Twitter. Uh, He goes on in his article to say that that the idea that what he's hearing is it'll be at both so it'll be part of google stadia hey guess what we're bringing destiny 2 there maybe they talk about, he didn't go into this maybe they talk about the cross save there and then on top of that talk about it during right, the right. destiny thing the destiny stream a big coming out party for bungie because this is their first time hey we own everything lock stock and barrel we are the developers right, and we are right. the publishers activations out of the picture right even jason I, I saw some of jason's tweets this morning jason um has uh historically been uh, uh, a bit, a bit of a, a Google Stadia skeptic. Yeah, and you know, and has been talking about you know you know you don't really own the games and they can get yanked from. He you was at the one. Any I, I think his one. He was one of the tweets I saw that blew up right over the weekend when Google when YouTube servers were down or whatever. Google yeah, and he was down. saying, "Oh, I can't wait can't until wait I play all my games this way." And yeah, I, yeah. I, I got into it a little, into it a little bit because I'm not quite as cynical about that as as, as he is. But even Jason, who is a skeptic. Um, uh, admitted that uh, something like this would be great. Let's say, let's say that you know you're a player, and this is the, the kind of the case study that he mentioned. Let's say that you play on Xbox or yep. you play on PC or whatever. PlayStation again, we don't know. Um, but you go on a, a business trip or whatever, and you've got your MacBook with you. You don't have like your big heavy gaming rig, but you've got your MacBook Air or whatever. Yeah. If you've got a good connection, plug it into Google Stadia, pick up your progress right there. You know, cross do the cross save thing. Yeah. Do a couple of raid raids or whatever. Go back home. All that stuff's copied back over onto your Xbox, and on, on you go. That I mean, if it, if it works as advertised, that's going to be pretty great. One hundred percent. Yeah, you know, one of the things Jason was calling out right is uh, I, I've been very skeptical of Google State. This is from Jason's Twitter. But as a friend just pointed out to me, the thought of being able to log into Destiny Two on a MacBook while traveling is kind of appealing. No more missing. There out you go. That's exactly that was exactly the tweet I was referencing. Exactly. Um, and that's the future that gets me so excited. Right. Again, I'm going to L.A. this afternoon to get down there for EA Play and stuff yeah and in the ghostbuster fan fest if uh don't forget ghostbuster fan fest ghostbuster the video game year of dreams anyways uh you know in my backpack what do i got playstation 4 just because i want to play stuff i i want i i didn't want to try testing out on hotel wi-fi the yesterday's announcement and you can use a controller on the ipad so i was like do i want to try remote play and with the ipad i'm like i don't want to do that right now i just want to have everything there but this is the exact same idea right that if you just if i i'm bringing it down for if on a whim i have time to play if i want to play something or screw around in no man's sky or something happens in division two and i want to jump in yeah but it's the same idea right if if it was as simple as well well, whatever cross play over and jump in and do something and it's just there And let's not forget, in, in reality, the, the the case study that Jason just mentioned might uh, sounds great in theory, but like again, let's say you're doing that in a hotel, 
hotel Wi-Fi is going to be as problematic question, as it's right? ever been. It's a big question. Uh, so who knows how well that's going to work. Do you know uh, I lived the dream when I went down and did, when we, Tim and I went to the Florida thing for Full Sail? Yeah. Lived the dream finally of, I brought the PlayStation, of course. Wanted right. to play some Division. Hotel right. Wi-Fi. You, you brought that little, that little portable monitor thing? I didn't bring you? the monitor. Okay. I brought, I, the monitor's like, hey, am I going to have downtime on a set? Or right. I'm just going to be sitting around. Usually at a hotel, or a hotel, you can get in the back of your TV. Yeah. Uh, but I was sitting there. I got logged onto the wi- hotel Wi-Fi. Garbage. Saw they had yeah. the Ethernet port in the wall. Yep. Plugged it in. Didn't work. Called mm-hmm. the front desk. Like, we'll send a technician. I'm like, this technician's not going to know what I want. He came in. He's like, oh, yeah, I'll turn this on for you. Went down, turned it on. I was getting blazing speeds. I was like, oh, oh my God. Like that. What a dream. What a dream. That's fantastic. Exactly. You are living the dream. Exactly. Uh, so PlayStation 4. Uh, you know, the most, well, aside from PC, of course, Greg, the most popular format. Sure. Um, uh, it's kind of annoying that PlayStation 4, which has, which is the most popular console right now, yeah. um, are remaining as kind of the, 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 the kind of the, we don't want to play with the rest of you guys. It's the rumor. Everyone else is in, Xbox is in, PC is in, Google is in. This is come a, on, come join the party. This isn't Sony. the official announcement. Tomorrow, they either will be a part of it. PlayStation will be a part of it by the time this goes to press, or by the time this launches, they will be a part of it. They don't. They will not have. They do not need another Fortnite. They do not need to stand. Away I think this. at the very least they need. To, it is a great. I like as you know. I, I'm, I love cross save. It's something I'm really hoping they bring to the division two so that I can come across and play sure. with you guys and play with other friends that otherwise wouldn't have access to. Um, I think for tomorrow's announcement, if if they anna- if if their announcement is. Google Stadia, PC, Xbox, Sony. Right now, we just have no news on that. That to me is a fail it, because, well, because, because be Sony is, is such a. Cons- they, they have to at very least say, and we're working with Sony to bring this at a later date. Exactly. At the very least, exactly. like promise that it's coming. I didn't. It didn't make uh, the Roper report today, but worth bringing into this context, of course. As I scroll and scroll, here we go. Uh, over on. GamesIndustry.biz, of course, a favorite of ours here. Matthew Handrahan has an article, Sony, Sony colon, Microsoft Cloud Partnership was a response to Google Stadia. PlayStation's Jim Ryan says, new thinking is required to avoid, quote, having events around us overtake us, right? Do you- With that messaging and that mindset, this is based off the CNET interview, apparently, come on, like, you can't, you can't sit back. PlayStation took it on the chin about Fortnite, deservedly so. They took their lumps. They came around to the right side. They did Rocket League. Apparently, Call of Duty is going to be fine. This right? is this is happening. The trains are all leaving the station. The question is, does Sony want to be on the train or or be left, left behind, behind? Left behind yeah. on the platform. Um, what was I going to say about that? There was one other point I wanted to make. Um, I don't think they're going to be left behind. I think that this is just one of those things where it's the rumor right now. And by the time we get to press, by the time you get to the real thing, by the time it's actually out, Sony have gotten their things in, in ducks in a row. I know what it was. I wanted to ask you a question, in fact. Um, oh, I, I didn't read too much about the uh, the, the Sony um, uh, Microsoft cloud in- joint cloud sure. initiative, other yeah. than everyone going, oh, cats and dogs living together and all yeah, that yeah. stuff, mass hysteria. Yeah. Do you think that that is going to result in universal crossplay across PlayStation and Xbox? I think it's a step towards that. I mean, anybody, anytime somebody's simplifying and starting to work together on the same technology basis, yeah. sure. Yeah. I don't think that's the point of it. I think really it is just Microsoft leasing tech to PlayStation, right? I oh, do think need- it's coming, though. I, think, I, would, I, would say give it five, I would say give it five years. I'm going to say five years. I'll see you back here five years from today. We'll see I how we do. I think you will. I think you're going to see me way quicker, Gary. I, here's think? the thing. I'm saying I, for me, five years is a very conservative estimate. Here's I. I you think it'll happen sooner? than You that? know that I don't compliment you often. I don't like how <laughs> successful you are. I don't like that you're better off than me. However, I don't like your glasses look better than mine now. However, you were ahead of your time on this, man. When you when we were talking, sirens are on our end. When we were on these shows talking about the division two, when you were talking about you want to be able to cross play, you want to be able to cross save. I was like. Gary, you're living in a dream world. That'll happen eventually uh, five years from now. Yeah. Right now, it makes sense for the free-to-play small indie games like right. something like Fortnite, like right. Rocket League, right. like Minecraft to an extent. Even right. still, it's not cross-play. Uh, it's not happening for the big boys. And yeah. then the biggest boy, yeah. Call of Duty, came out and was like, no, cross-play everywhere. And it was like, oh, fuck, everything just changed. Well, I mean, you could, I, I mean, don't think people talk about it enough. You, might, you might make the argument that Fortnite is the biggest boy, and this is a move that, that a move that they've already made. But you're right. What, what, what it's going to take is not a handful of, like, cutesy indies, but, like, the prime movers, mm-hmm. the big quadru- quadruple A games, Call of Duty, Destiny, those two in very short order have announced that they're embracing cross-save, cross-play. That's what it takes is just a handful yeah. of, like, really major games, and then suddenly that raises the bar for it, and it becomes the expectation What's for everyone excuse, else. right? That becomes, yeah. the, that becomes the question. What is your excuse? And that's why 
I do not believe, and, I, and I'm not even carrying water for Sony here. I'm saying after them taking the whooping they took on Fortnite, I cannot, under any circumstance, believe they're going to come out to this and be like, well, no, we're worried about X, Y, and Z. No, it, maybe they say there's a technical hurdle we're working yeah, on. That's yeah, the problem. Yeah. But it's the same thing as anything where you have these games where you're logging into a server. When you can go to Bungie.net and see all your stats, all your successes, what your character build out, what your, your loadout is. Once you can do that, then that's just zeros and ones that can be applied anywhere, which the cross save makes it so interesting of, oh, cool, I want to play on PC tonight with Gary, whatever. Boop, right. and you send it over and it goes, okay, there's the character. You know, yep. it's regenerating you over yep. here. Yeah, so you, so you're, you, so you're quite, um, you're quite uh, bullish on this right now. You think that we, you think sooner rather than later that cross play, cross save, all that good stuff will be the the norm rather than the exception. I think it'll be more normal. I don't think I don't I don't think I don't know when we get to the universal turnkey. It's just expected. There'll, there'll be a, there'll be a tipping point, and I would argue that Call of Duty and um, and uh, Destiny getting on board that's Major. that's that's very tipping point. Oh yeah, totally. Well, it, it's what it is now. You figure is before it was all right uh, in my head. The smaller guys, right? And I'm saying smaller with a wink. Epic, right? Yeah. Fall, Fortnite, Rocket League, whatever, <laughs> right, right? They're going to go out these smaller games and figure it out, blah, blah, blah. And now it's going the opposite way where now the big guys are coming in figuring it out. So you figure once all that knowledge under, and we figure out where the pain points are and what does keep it from happening and why there is a bad uh, translation or whatever cross save thing, then it can just trickle down to the middle tier games that don't have that ability. I can say it's the same reason of like, hey, I'm making a multiplayer game. It's peer to peer. I'm a small indie. I'm a double A studio. I don't have the money to have a server farm, right? right you guys right. need to do it yourself, right? And I think that I mean, and that's why I think the idea of um, I, again, I have no idea if this is part of their plans, but if Microsoft and Sony were to provide, look, the architecture is just there for you to use, yep. like an API, just use it, yep. right? That would be and, and every and then everyone can get on board. That would be tremendous. And I feel like there's two stages to it. Cross play. I feel like that's the brass ring. That's certainly what I want. I, every time I talk about this. I see people in the YouTube content uh, comments going, I don't give a fuck about crossplay. You know, most people only have one console, so crossplay. But a lot of us do have more than one. Yeah. And our friends' lists are bifurcated or trificated across these different platforms. For, for many of us, it's something that has value. Even uh, I'll stop you right there if you don't mind. Even if you only had one, I feel like this still, this is, solves the problem in a lot of ways, right? If you only have a PlayStation and then you become friends with somebody at PAX or through the kind of funny community yeah, or and you they see only have an Xbox and they're but looking you can't for ever a be raid, friends. Yeah, if, you're, if you want to Sherpa a bunch of Xbox people through it and you're on PC, you're on a PlayStation, whatever. Like, yeah, let's, that's say, let's, say, let's say you hit, up, hit it up with a friend at PAX or wherever. Sure. E3 next week. You, you meet your soul, your gaming soulmate. Sure. Oh my God, you love the, you, you love the, you, lo you. you love this wacky game from the, I, oh my God, we have all the same tastes, this is so great. Yeah. Let's swap gamer tags. Oh, I'm on PlayStation, I'm on Xbox. Fuck. Friendship ended. Your rivals. You know now what I mean? You, now you got to hate each it's other. It's West Side Story. Yeah. It's Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, now you got to start doing this. Exactly. The Jets are shit for life. So yeah. we, we got we got to get past that. I, 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 I do very much. I'm very bullish about this as well. I do believe in a, in a few years, let's just say a few years. Okay. In a few years, we'll be looking back on the ages of everyone having these uh, these Wall arbitrary guns. walls yeah. between platforms. We're going to we're going to we're going to see that as very silly and very primitive. Um, and I think we'll get there. In, in, I like that there's there's two stages of this cross play. I can understand why that's kind of difficult because the network network architecture for different games is often sure. very different, and you know I'm not I'm not a I'm not not a network engineer, but I can understand why it might why it might be difficult to have say me on my Xbox playing the division with you on your play. That's not just like flipping a switch. Yeah. they've got to go wire in a bunch of back end shit to make that work. But cross again, I'm not an expert, but cross save. Aren't you just porting over a save state? I mean, isn't that all it is? Well, if, see here where it gets so fascinating with this is not even. Cross save is correct, and that's what you're doing in yada yada yada. It's the fact, and correct me if I'm wrong, kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, but for the division, I know I'm right, <laughs> that you have no local save data, right. right? In terms of your profile, obviously, you like preferences, but you know, but your progress in the game Des and all that Bungie stuff. Bungie is holding on to my thing, so it's not yep. even cross save, yeah, as much as it is just cross modification, right? Of yeah. putting you on the right track and taking all the information it already has that it catalogs and understands to make the game work and just going, oh, put it into this channel instead of that channel. Right. It seems even easier than cross save where if it was like, I want to take uh, the Tomb Raider save and bring it over to my Xbox. That's more difficult. I think I think we are at a tipping point. I think that when we look back and write the history of this decade in gaming, we'll look at 2019, 2020 as the time that the Walled Gardens went away and everyone could play with each other. Yeah. And again, I think we'll I think we'll look back at what we've historically done in console gaming with everyone being separated by these arbitrary platforms as very silly indeed. We'll be in the museum, you know, while we streaming games to our phone. You know, 
We won't be playing on any consoles anymore. No, that's right. It'll just be like a... Remember, you remember the, um, the commercial that PlayStation had years ago for PlayStation 9? <laughs> yeah, It was just course, like this, yeah. it was just like this crystal, orb, like crystal sphere yeah, yeah, yeah. and it just like beamed the games directly into yeah. your brain. We'll get there. We're getting there. Uh, number two on the Roper Report. There's no rock steady at E3 2019. <laughs> poor, Barrett, don't cry Barrett. yet. Uh, at Sefton Hill. This actually works to Barrett's predictions. At Sefton Hill tweeted last night that he's from Rock City. Hi, all. A number of you have asked, so we wanted to let you know up front that at Rock City Games won't be showing at E3 this year. We'll be watching as fans, but remaining in London. Hard at work on our next big project. Enjoy the show. So, I so got, the, what, I'll be the first to say it. What a piece of shit. No, come on. They're great. No, Sefton's a friend. I'm allowed to okay, joke around okay, about okay. it. No, take okay. all the time you want. I yeah. know. It was funny. The people who don't understand that we know each other, the way okay. they took that seriously last night, I was like, guys, okay. I'm Greg Miller. I'm the anti-crunch guy. Like, no, take your time. <laughs> you know, do your thing. Get I mean, it out so, there. So, Barrett, as a rock steady stan, yeah. uh, as you are. <laughs> Thank I you for using that lingo. I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying, you know. If you, if you don't understand, <laughs> How stan, do you do, fellow kids? Watch YouTube.com um, slash kind of funny. You, Devin Sowing. Let, so, let me, ask you, let me ask you this, because you seem knowledgeable about this and very passionate. Um, was, there, was there any kind of reasonable expectation? that we'd see something from Rocksteady or was it just fanboy hopes and dreams? I think it's a combination of fanboy hope, hopes and dreams but it's also we haven't seen anything from them in four years so I feel like it feels like the time is kind of right maybe? It felt like the time was right um, and it, but I'm not surprised by this I'm not sad by it because like in my E3 predictions, which you can watch on youtube.com slash kind of funny games, uh, my prediction was that Rock, whatever it, Rocksteady is going to show was going to be Weird and different and whatnot. Uh, of course, I'm getting that wrong because they're they're not going to E3. But this actually plays to my other prediction: is that WB Montreal will be showing a Batman Court of Owls uh, Arkham game. Because and that's where I want to bring in the Dead Man 97, aka Alex, who wrote into Patreon.com/slash Kind of Funny Games. Hey guys, Happy Widow Wednesday. With the disappointing news that Rocksteady's new game not being shown at E3 this year, do you think we'll be getting any type of DC game anytime soon? I'm sure DC has been seeing the success of Marvel's Spider-Man sorry, and the hype surrounding Square's Avengers game. Surely they want to be a part of it sooner rather than later. Other than a Batman or Superman game, what DC think will happen next? So we talked about this at length, right, on right. the Gamescast predictions, youtube.com slash kind of funny games right now, or you, uh, podcast services around the globe. Uh, the running theory, right, is that Rocksteady is probably um, Suicide Squad, right? Or yeah. Justice League. So, like, DC-related. Some, uh, yeah, the, the rumors, that's what the rumors have been, right? Yeah. And then the other rumor, of course, was that WB Montreal is working on a Batman Arkham uh, Court of Owl game. Which has more cemented, like... That's, there seems to have been more and leaks and stuff about that than yes. anything else, right? Yes. And so... I on my official prediction was Rocksteady will finally be there. Now this is now becoming basically my they're gonna put out another pat upon yeah. prediction of like it's got to be true. If, if I keep saying the sun's gonna rise, the sun's gonna rise eventually, right? This is gonna happen. So if I just eventually I'm gonna get a point. I'm playing the long game here. It was fanboy hopes and dreams in terms of there had been no news saying hey Rocksteady Rocksteady is teasing this or this leaked or whatever. We just know they're working on a game. We know they've been working on it a while. But then when Barrett brought up. Oh, I think, it, you know, the Court of Owls theme seems to be getting leaked more and more closer to that. And I, I, I was like, fuck, that's actually a way better prediction. And it actually makes more sense, right? Mm -hmm. Stick with me. Because, hey, WB Montreal put out this Batman game here at the end of the console lifestyle. Hey, Rocksteady, you've waited this long. Just wait and put it out at the next, the new gen consoles, maybe even a launch-ish game. And that's exactly what they did for Origins and Arkham Knight. Origins yeah. was, like, they they were marketing that game as, like, hey, like, Rocksteady's working on their game, which kind of got leaked because of Kevin Conroy and all that confused yeah, stuff yeah. that happened. But they're like, hey, like this is the game to like stave off the hunger so you guys can get another Arkham game and then Arkham Knight is going to come next gen. Uh, and so that's exactly what happened. And I honestly think that they're going to try to do that again. Batman Arkham Court of Owls will be an end of cycle uh, console generation for this generation. And yeah. then whatever Rocksteady is putting out will be within the first year of the next gen console. Well, Please be Batman, what, what, inter what interested yeah. me about you oh, said what you, about what you just said was you said there's a possibility that you think they could be working on something like more out of left field. Yeah. Do you think there's any possibility at all that they're just not working on a DC game and it's something completely different? It could be possible. Like, I feel like Rocksteady has enough clout at this point to like make something on their own and for people to trust them but uh, also on the other side I feel like WB probably sees of like there is a DC market so it would be dumb for them to move away from DC yeah so. I, I can't yeah. there's no way W I mean they're owned by WB WB is right. gonna have them make a DC game because exactly. it's the only fucking and that's why I think this have. Batman <laughs> Arkham game is for Court of Owls I think it's 
I th- I don't think they're stupid enough to let go of the Batman Arkham title yet and to have maybe give Montreal that series from here on out. So. What do you think fans would be most excited about? Justice League? If, if, if Rockstar would say this is what it is. Because that would that would allow you to retain some Batman, right? But, but, but add a bunch of stuff to it. Add other characters and grow out the universe. I, I feel like fans would be more... Uh, like fans already of the Arkham series would be more excited for another Arkham game because it's a proven entity. With Justice League, you have to prove that other gameplay styles for different characters work, and I don't know how you prove that and make it a good game. I personally wonder, with all the rumors, and this is just, and we talked about this in Gamescast, tossing all the rumors together for a Superman game, a Justice League game, a uh, uh, Suicide Squad game, a Gotham by Gaslamp game, a weird one where it was was Damien, but it wasn't in the Batman Arkham Universe thing. All these different rumors. I wonder how much of it, and stick with me, I know this is doom and gloom from the DC fanboy, is how much of it is the reverberations of uh, the actual movie universe just suffering, uh-huh. right, and floundering. Where I think the rumors were that, like, you know, game, WB Montreal was working on what a Suicide Squad game that then got canned and then or got and then got morphed into a Justice League game, and then Rock City was doing the Batman thing that didn't happen, and then they picked up the Suicide Squad. So if they're is it then is it also like, well, now we need to get distance from the Suicide Squad movie that people didn't like. Well, Justice League's coming out. Well, shit, no one likes Justice League. Like, yeah. it's but it's I, their but it's their own version of it, isn't it? People, I, yeah, I, 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 I would I would posit at this point, and maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but I think I'm right in saying that there's probably more in the fandom, there's probably greater fondness and affection for the Rocksteady verse than there is for the DCEU. 100%. 100%. Which is why I think it's so easy on paper to fix this. Where it's just like, yeah, do they should, when they were like, we're done with the Arkham games, right? Cool. They should have then done, moved to doing a Batman Beyond game with that Batman from the, not calling it Arkham anymore because yeah. it's not the Arkham, it's still the Arkham Universe, but, but it's it not doesn't the matter Arkham what you call it. It's storyline anymore. Right? Where then it's that, it's that Batman. It is Kevin Conroy being, you know, to Terry McGinnis, get Will Friedle in there and have it actually be that fucking game. Yeah, I feel awesome. like if Rocksteady were to announce, if they, let's say today all they announced, yeah, we're doing a Superman game. And that was all they did, a one word tweet. Yeah. My, my, what I would, what I, the first thing I would immediately extrapolate from that is that it's probably in the same Batman universe they created, right? Don't you Thing. Even if you don't see Batman, they would they would you probably reference so? they would probably reference w- events from the Arkham I games would ma- and stuff. I would imagine it's like a slightly implied thing. Like they wouldn't really like pull from like Batman stuff, but they would like imply like reference like tiny little things from the Batman games, but not make it about. But if they let's say they yeah. did an AMA and they said, "Is this in the same universe as the Arkham games?" My guess is they would say yes. Like oh, it's yeah. not obvious, but we're not. It's not a totally separate universe. Right. Okay. Because then, because that way, you obviously down the road. You, know, you can, I think the big you thing, can team the, them up. The big thing about it would be, I think they would. Uh, it, I think art style would tell you. Mm-hmm. Art style. I think, yeah. I think that Arkham art style, that bulky dude art style, has such a. Oh, that's what it is. If Superman came out and he didn't look like that, he'd be like, oh, not these. Well, to be people. fair, or Knight didn't really have that art style anymore. So. Yeah. Okay. What do you want, Barrett? Let's say if you, if you let's say I give you a genie wish right now for the next Rocksteady game. What is it? Um. I honestly don't have a genius for the next Rock Study game. I believe in whatever they want to do next. What would make you most happy? Like again, W Me Montreal coming out with Batman Arkham Court of Owls. Okay. Uh, and it's a prequel to Arkham Asylum, sequel to Arkham Origins, and it's right. the Court right. of Owls storyline. So you don't necessarily need anything. You don't need Superman or Justice League. You're just happy just to continue down the Batman route. Oh yes. Oh, he okay. loves Batman. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm the only one getting screwed over here. You know is there I mean? how many how many I mean back, there's what, like five Arkham games now? Do you feel like there's four. still much four? Yeah. Do you feel like they, they can continue to, to add to it? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Court of Owls is a great storyline. Yes. Is that a comic book run? Yeah. Okay, I'm yeah, not familiar with uh, that. Snyder. It's the new fifty two, like the beginning of the new fifty two run. It's legit one of the best Batman story arcs ever. Oh, cool. Is there I'm gonna have to pick up a trade. Oh yeah. All right. Number three, Barrett Courtney. SpongeBob <laughs> SquarePants <laughs> battle for b- bikini oh, bottom. I saw the re- I saw the reaction video. I saw real. the reaction video earlier today. Fucking doubted me. I don't think uh, you say me and Andrea gave you shit about it. I I remember I vaguely remember you and Andrea giving me shit about it. It's fair. Probably. I, I definitely probably. remember the Gamescast episode where Tim was like, Tim laughs you're a room. fucking idiot. Yeah. Fran was also like, you're dumb. All well, the, well, the they didn't actually. Too, they didn't actually say those things. But um, yeah, hell 
fucking. Uh, yes. We don't know much about it, right? There's a little teaser trailer. THQ Nordic put this out. They put today's tweet was who lives in a pineapple under the sea but isn't coming to E3 at SpongeBob is coming to PC and consoles at Nickelodeon at Purple Lamp and at THQ Nordic are happy to announce SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom rehydrated. Uh, the trailer ends saying it'll come to Switch, PS4, Xbox, and PC. So is this like a like a Ducktales style remaster? Is that what this is? Bear, what so, the hell is it? What was so, this game? Why is it so good? Uh, um. So Battle for Bikini Bottom. This is a remaster of a pri- previous game. Yes. Yeah, so okay. this is a PS2 game that was. It was a licensed THQ uh, 3D platformer, SpongeBob, and it was like, you know, when when I thought back on it, like growing up, I was I always thought like, how oh, was I looking at it with rose tinted glasses? And I played it actually like a couple of years ago. My friend had a GameCube, and I was like, no, this is still like this is very much a Simpsons hidden run situation where this was actually a really fun game. It got like average reviews, like a seven point two or whatever from IGN and all that good stuff. But like, it gains this weird cult following over the years, and it's even like one of the most like uh, like. There's like a whole speed running community for the game and all this stuff. And uh, someone in the comments of the reaction video said like, oh, well, you know, they announced this like a, a year ago. But really only what they announced last year was that THQ Nordic and Nickelodeon were partnering to uh, make re- re-releases for specific IP like Avatar The Last Airbender. They were pretty obviously being like, yo, we're going to bring back some dope PS2 games. And the immediately the first one I wanted was Battle for Bikini Bottom, and they finally officially confirmed it, and I'm so happy. Well, bores and worries about it. Bores and 00 wrote into patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames just like you can and says, Good morning, Greg and Gary. The E3 hype train keeps on rolling, and a game that has a huge fan base was shown today for the first time. I'm obviously talking about SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. This game has a huge cult following on the internet, and that leads me to ask, should we make a remake slash remaster cult classics? I know Okami HD and Bluepoint's Shadow of the Colossus have been successes in this department, but then you have other ones like Onimusha HD, which sold okay, and don't even get me started on the Silent Hill remastering. I feel like success has changed. Success has changed a little bit, and just made the original game look the way we always thought it looked. And the failures have changed everything about the game, or have only sold to the people who. Uh, will sales expectations on this game be so high? And since it's a cult game, will it fail? Thanks for everything you do, Borzen. Um, I. Mm. Yeah, I, I understand the concern of like why why do this, but I also think it's it's this game and like few other games like Simpsons Hidden Run that like have this like weird like Simpsons Hidden Run a little less so, but like weird cult followings that like yeah this game's gonna come to Switch and you know like little kids on their Switch are be like oh yeah like I I like SpongeBob like let's play this game and whatnot so. Um, I don't know what their expectation is. For any, any, when you, when you, th- when you think Welcome about it, welcome to working in THQ Nordic's I know. Room. When you like, when you think about it, Barrett, especially with a game like SpongeBob, which yeah. appeals to a younger audience, there's a whole generation of kids that are now SpongeBob age exactly. that weren't even alive when this first. So for them, it's a whole new game. Yeah, and the fact that it's coming to Switch, like specifically, I think will do well for it. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm very excited. I I don't think it's yeah. gonna sell gangbusters. No, it's not. But it's, I also don't think T- THQ Nordic probably thinks it's going to, even yeah. though THQ Nordic keeps do- doing crazy stuff. They do. Speaking of crazy THQ Nordic stuff, Ooh. Greg Way, uh, this is game one of a three game announcement they talked they teased yesterday when they said three games, three days because the best things come in threes. Stay tuned. Uh, game one turned out, they said then had game one June fifth, uh, four p.m. CT- CET, uh, ten a.m. Eastern. Game two well, that was forty minutes ago. Did that, that was. Was, that was SpongeBob. Oh, that was, Spo- SpongeBob that was, the first was game one. Okay. one. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And it was longer than that. The, the CET screws it up. It's the 10 a.m. Right. So that was 7 a.m. Our time. 7 a.m. Okay. Yeah. Game two is going to be June tomorrow, June 6th. That will be at 2 p.m. Eastern. And then game three is June 7th at 2 p.m. Eastern as well. So that's what 11 a.m. Our time, Pacific time. For we have no clue what uh, game two and game three. Might Nobody be. knows anymore what's happening. Uh, mm-hmm. To answer the, there was to, rumors of a dark siders something or other. Yeah. To answer the question, I am generally uh, very pro remake, pro remaster. I, I like seeing them. Maybe it's because I'm a little older, long, longer in the tooth, and I remember all the original games. So I'm like, oh, that's back. You know, it's a, it's cool to kind of see something old come back. Well, that's the thing is, remember THQ Nordic has a bunch of weird stuff. Leading to one of my r- predictions from the games cast was, hey, where the hell is? Give me some Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Yeah, and a uh, lot of people are also there's like a weird red faction leak. Oh yeah, like. people are stoked about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. And then yeah, so I'm sorry, J- Jeremy Winslow on June 3rd over at Gamespot.com, new Darksiders game to be revealed at E3 uh, 2019. 
it seems. Uh, oh, because it was based on a Coliseum thing. I gotcha, I gotcha. I think the idea of remaking and remastering games and putting them in front of a new audience is actually something that in games in particular is really great. Because you think about it, I think generally video, with, 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 with plenty of exceptions for sure, but for the most part, I would say video games don't age as well as other entertainment media. You can yeah. go back and watch classic movies from decades ago and still enjoy them. Uh, you can go back and listen, obviously, to you know great old music. Music is a hundred years. Yeah, you know, go back to the Beatles, mm -hmm. or go back to Mozart, and that music is still phenomenal today. It hasn't yeah, aged at yeah. all. It's as good as it ever was. But video games, especially those from certain genres, because of the technical limitations and the expectations that we have, you know, for the games that we play in the current uh, era. Um, like for me, the play the PlayStation One and N sixty four genre uh, uh, era, that's a dead era for me. For the most part, you cannot go back and play those games because they're just fucking an unho unholy mess right. by today's standards. 100%. But like, let's say for example, if you took, I'm trying to think, like a really popular N sixty. Okay, okay, uh, GoldenEye. If they remastered GoldenEye and put that on the Switch or on Xbox and PlayStation Four, and it was the game that everyone remembered and loved so much from the N sixty four era, that weird but with all the new bells and whistles, there. wouldn't that be terrific? Wouldn't that be terrific? Yeah. I, I want to see more like that. I love that. Bring back the old classics. I mean, they all, but like the other thing is like uh, Crash Bandicoot, you know, like they can do stuff like that where they bring back these games from the PS1 era yeah. and, and, you know, make them bearable uh, in this uh, generation of games. Yeah. You know? It's so. just one of those. It's, it's like, like, I mean, you're literally breathing new life into these old games. SpongeBob is, a, is, just, is just a weird one it just because it wasn't until one. you that I was like, oh, there's the people love this. And game? that's why, know. like in my prediction, I, I was like, oh, they're going to do a Nickelodeon collection because in my heart of hearts, I only cared about Bik Battle for Bikini Bottom. I was like, there's no way they would do that on its own thing. Yeah. So the fact that it's on its own thing and not part of a collection is even weirder to me. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I'm just, I think, I think if you pick, I think if you, if you are smart in the games that you pick to bring back, you know, in a remaster or whatever, and you treat, treat it with respect and hold on to, you know, what was great about the original as, you know, they did with crash and shadow of the Colossus and so many of the other games that we're talking about here, DuckTales, um, only good can come of it. And I think it's a great opportunity for games to find new audiences. Cause you know, cause a lot, again, there are, there are kids playing games today that weren't even born right. when the N64 and the PlayStation 100%. 1 was a thing. And so then they'll never play those games because they won't go back and play games that look like fucking frankly like abstract art that fell into a toilet when you look at like a PlayStation it's 1 It's so or weird right because game. NES, SNES that those uh, eras, those games hold up. Those you play hold those up. And they're great. But there was that you, then you jump to it was, N64, it was that, tra it was, that like, it was that 2D to 3D, 3D. transition genre. Mm. Go, but those games are, they, they hurt They hurt me to look at now. Yeah, they yeah, look yeah. so awful. Yeah. But, the, but there's a core of a like, again, and the Goldeneye. There was a great game in there, and at the time it was uh -huh. as good as games looked. So we didn't think we didn't you know think any different about it. Yeah. But now I go back and look at it. Gee, I'd love to play Goldeneye again, but like, I just can't look at those shitty There's graphics. There's a version on the Wii. There's a fix for that. Uh, the, the the last uh, thought I have uh, Re uh, before I just want to get this off my plate before I forget about it. Yeah. The nanobiologist linked me over to the Geek uh, website mm -hmm. where an article is posted saying that the other THQ games are going to be Dark Siders Genesis and Destroy All Humans. Ooh, okay. Ooh, destroy all humans. That's a good one. Was that the uh, one where you were like the little, uh, the little alien like, running around? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you're like, yeah, uh, there's a lot of cows. Yeah. Uh, at least uh, destroy all humans too was a was a really okay. fun game. The first one was like a proof of concept. The last thing I'll say is I am bummed that it's not. I forget which developer they said was working on the remaster, but Heavy Irons, who's the original developer of this game, yeah, who was under THQ and then became um, independent once THQ collapsed. I have talked about for years wanting to like do a remaster for this game, so like I am bummed of like THQ D Nordic didn't like uh, I don't know like they might have been in talks like who knows, but I do know that the like that team really wanted to like help bring back bring this game back. So that's my last thought. Well then, we'll see what happens and if more of your dreams come true. Barrett, you're gonna have to tell us if your dreams came true with number four on the Roper Report: Pokemon <laughs> Sword and Shields Direct today. Of course, uh, there's a Pokemon Sword and Shield Direct reacts right now. YouTube.com/slash Kind of Funny Games. It is Barry Courtney. It is Tim Gettys and Tim Gettys' weird weeping eye. Yeah. Did he, we ever get to the bottom of why his eye looks like that and why my, it's crying? My my guess is him taking out his contacts or something like messed him up. I don't know why. Do, so. Is it conjunctivitis? Do I have to worry about the old pink eye? Probably. Damn it. I just rubbed my eye. I think. Damn it. Fuck. It's too late, Greg. Uh, Adam Baker said IGN laid out these bullet points uh, as a big deal. A new phenomenon in certain parts of the Galar region, uh, including gyms, uh, Dynamax, 
It makes Pokemon giant in size and gives them incredible strength. All moves that Pokemon know will be turned into powerful maximums, with some changing entirely, not unlike Z moves. So this is I saw that I watched started the reaction trailer with you guys. Yeah. And Pokemon get huge in this, right? That's the idea. Yeah, that's like the gimmick, and yeah, like Adam says, like it's the it's the Z move type of thing that they uh, that they've had in the last couple of games. It's it's a whole gimmick. It they make it seem important this time around with strategy and all that stuff, but who knows if it'll actually take effect. So okay. it, it's that is like the least hype thing I'm I'm about. Like I, I don't hate it, but it's also like uh, whatever. Next thing Adam put in his report here was max raid battles. Four Pokemon trainers can team up to fight and capture wild Dynamax Pokemon. These are the big ones. Who will stay in Dynamax form for the entire battle and have special powers to make more formidable opponents. Uh, Max raid battles can be joined via local wireless or online, but online battles, uh, you need the uh, Nintendo online subscription. Where do we come down on the max raid battles, Barrett? Uh, I think this is super cool. I think this is a cool way to integrate more multiplayer stuff into Pokemon. Like, we've seen it very minimal, I feel like, in the last couple of years, just with, like, the end game like battling other people yeah so i think this is a cool integration of pokemon go stuff into this game of okay. not one for one of like having all this stuff cross over but like being able to raid with friends and do that kind of stuff is a really cool concept i'm excited to see like how it plays out again like all of this stuff we'll have to really like obviously get your hands on yeah, get yeah, deep yeah, into yeah. it yeah, so, yeah. Uh, but like you know what this feels almost cool. i mean I'm, I'm certainly no pokemon expert but you know what this almost feels like a like a step towards which i would actually be quite exciting about is is pokemon a version of pokemon down the road that almost feels like a like a monster hunter world almost like mm. a game like a destiny live service sure, yeah. kind of epic pokemon we world where you can go out and People team up MMO. and do raids and bring you know team up to capture legendary pokemon and stuff yeah. that would be great yeah i mean Come yeah. back to your like your home base, and there's like a whole world. But it just seems like it's slowly going. Well, that Nintendo's way. Yeah. not really the company to lead that charge because sure. you know they've always been slow Game with online. Freak. Uh, while there appear to still be random battles with Pokemon and Tall Grass, there will be Pokemon also roaming and living in the world. Yes. So this is like uh, so I can see what Pokemon I'm after. Yeah, it, it's like a weird combination of Pokemon Let's Go, Pikachu, and Eevee, and the uh, recent Pokemon games. So, um, I. I, I I think this is like a cool half step to like what Tim and myself wanted of uh -huh. seeing Pokemon naturally in the world. Um, and again, like they kind of showed Pokemon like randomly generating and all that stuff, depending on like weather patterns and what area you're in in the world. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that all takes effect. But it is like a cool like half step to where we want to go. Okay. And then the final bullet point I pulled from Adam's piece. Uh, the, a place where you can find the widest variety of Pokemon in, in the Galar region. This is Wild Areas. Wild Areas, a place where you can find the widest variety of Pokemon in the Galar region. The wild area stretches between cities and will be home to different Pokemon, depending on where you are and what the weather is. Trainers, for the first time, will also have full control of the camera in wild areas. Yeah, so this is exciting because a lot of people have been frustrated with Pokemon cameras. Uh, the fixed camera. Yeah, the fixed yeah. cameras for so long. Uh, so this, again, is like a cool half step. It seems the way they explain it, and I'm going to get really nerdy on your ass right now. Uh, Please do. Uh, wild area seemed at first like it was just going to be like a cooler safari, safari zone, which was like its own segmented area at least in the early Pokemon games where you just go out and catch wild Pokemon but it was always in a specific section of the game the way they explain this it kind of seems like wild area is going to be the place you go to in between cities like uh, routes and stuff in the regular Pokemon games yeah so again it is a step to like what we want of this like kind of natural like open world feeling in a Pokemon game um, and so, yeah, like the the last three bullet points are all things that I'm like, oh, we're getting there. And we were saying this, uh, uh, you can see our kind of full like live reactions on YouTube.com slash kind of funny games. But one of the things I said was this is a weird in between of what a three a Pokemon 3DS game is and what a Pokemon Switch game should could, be like could and should be. Yeah. So I, I, I feel like. It's not this iteration, but maybe next generation, maybe next iteration of Pokemon, we get there, and that's that's what makes me very excited. So, what, where did you you this? What was the reaction from you and Tim in, in, encapsulated all? Was you, you happy with this? Um, I was excited about it. Tim was a little like he was he was excited. But what it was not, expected? It, it was like kind of what was expected from Pokemon the last couple of years. So they didn't quite get uh, to things that he exactly wanted. Like he was saying, this every step forward or two steps forward. 
forward, there's always like a step and a half back. Yeah. Which I don't disagree with him on, but I'm still I'm still really excited. It's one of my most anticipated games this year. So Okay. Uh Nanobiologist wrote in to patreon.com slash kinda funny games, of course. Seeing the future and knowing Gary and I would have nothing to say about this and says, Greg and Gary, neither of you are major Pokemon fans. Greg, you only really played Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, right? And Gary, have you tried any of the games? But, after watching the Direct, are you both willing to try the new game? Did it attract you enough to give you a true Pokemon RPG... I'm sorry, did it attract you enough to give a true Pokemon RPG a fighting chance? Well, I, I, it's, it's true. I'm not a huge Pokemon fan. I did play... I did play um, you're an adult, Eevee. you know what I mean? Um, you're playing Division 2, right? Yeah, that's don't right. leave me hanging. Come on. Up here, up games. high. Up high. <laughs> Come on. But I don't, I don't make the uh, Pokemon decisions in my house. My, uh, <laughs> my, my daughter does. Um, and she's forgotten more about Pokemon than I will ever know. So, you know, she got... Uh, Eevee. She even got a little Pokeball controller. She loves it. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure she, she hasn't seen the direct yet, but I'm sure she'll be very excited about uh, Sword and Shield as well. It's not It's not my cup of tea. I'm, I'm waiting for Animal Crossing. Uh, yeah. Oh, God. Don't give me oh, God, We're holding Gary. out for that one Animal week, Crossing. One week. They got to tell us next week. You think they've got to tell they us next gotta week? They got to tell us next week. It's a okay. 2019 game. Come on. What are you up to, Tom Nook? You little trash panda. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. Uh, I gave, yeah, I, tr- I got into Let's Go for a, se- a hot second uh, when Jen was obsessed with it. And then back in the day, I played uh, Pokemon Soul Silver. Is that right on uh, 3DS? That was the one with the p- pedometer, whatever I had the pedometer. And it's the same thing as always. I played for a while. I'm like, I'm going to give this a fighting chance. And then I get going and I'm just like, this is the same shit over I and over it. again. Back in, the 3D, back in the 3DS, I can't remember which one it was, but I picked up one of the 3DS games and thought, okay, like, should, I should try and make an effort. It's such a big deal. Pokemon's such a big thing. Yeah. I should try and make an effort to understand it and know what it's all about. Couldn't get into it. Yeah, it just it's doesn't a, click for me. Every, every generation is just 40 hours of wholesome fun, and the last uh, X and Y and Sun and Moon have been really, really, f- like, some of my favorite games in the last couple of years, so yeah. I'm, I'm pumped. Number five. On a jam-packed pre-E3 Roper report, GameStop shares are free-falling. This is Brendan Sinclair over GamesIndustry.biz. GameStop shares have taken a beating after the company reported its first fiscal quarter results yesterday. As of writing, the company is trading at $4.78, down nearly 39% in midday trading. GameStop's results showed revenue down 13.3%, and while it still posted a net profit, it was considerably less than the year prior. Uh, While the revenue was lower than analyst expectations, the company left its full year guidance unchanged. New hardware sales saw a particularly sharp decline, down 35%, despite an increase in Nintendo Switch unit sales. The only um, only part of its business to show significant growth of any sort was collectibles, which were up 10.5% year over year. Beyond the base numbers beyond, GameStop also announced that it was eliminating its practice of distributing quarterly dividends to shareholders as a way to save about $157 million in cash. This is the lowest mark GameStop shares have sold since 2003 before it had spun off from Barnes & Noble and acquired its chief rival, Electronics Boutique. The news keeps getting grimmer for GameStop. I mean, it's, I mean, it's not. It's not. I was thinking. I saw this story earlier when I woke up this morning. I was scrolling through, you know, the news on my phone, and I saw this, and it's not particularly surprising. I mean, look, GameStop is. It's 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 inevitable. So I said to you earlier, we'll do a word of the day. Sure. The word of the and it's not it's not a particularly big and fancy word, but it's a word many people may not know. The word is moribund. Moribund. Moribund means moribund. dying or about to die. Uh-huh. And I put it to you, Greg Miller, PC that GameStop gaming. is moribund. Oh, okay. okay, okay. Um, look, GameStop's going to go the same way as Tower Records, as Blockbuster Video. It's the, it's the next one in that natural chain of extinction. Yeah. It's going away. They, they are doing everything they can to stave off their inevitable death. Um, I, 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 the thing about collectibles is interesting because I see, I see that on the ground. I, last time I went into a GameStop, they have more and more stuff, more and more and more Funko space set aside for as far as the Funkos eye can see. and you know, Doctor Who keys, lunchboxes, charge keys that you put on your desk and yeah. stuff like that. Um, GameStop is basically turning into hot topic in, yeah. an, in an attempt to, to stave off its own extinction, and that may work for a while. But as long as their core business remains selling games, software, and hardware, yeah, it's it's not it's not sustainable. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. It seems like it's been happening so quickly. You know what I mean? I yeah. feel like in this past year we've in 365 we've been talking so much about oh this happened oh they're trying to sell oh they can't sell they're gonna they're sucking up they're doing this they're no longer sharing their quarterly dividends as a way to try to hold on to more money and not have this all go completely upside down right and so it seems like yeah you're staving off it's like a starbreeze situation where it's just getting worse and worse and worse and we'll see what happens this get that trash out of here Nick. enjoy Damn, Nick. Great, great enjoy the su- in, enjoy the superior m&ms Nick. Like you better than Greg. that's what I, there you go one of the many he also doesn't you know make fun of you all the time like i do because i'm a bully <laughs> they can't hear you period Bye.
Love you. I mean, do you? I mean, the, 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 just to play devil's advocate. Sure. I, I I'm, tr- I'm trying to make. Surely, surely there's all there's the games are popular and popular enough. I understand that EB and and Funko Land and these other places went away over the years, uh, and a lot of the mom and pop shops too. You but hope like, no mom and shop shops come back. <laughs> Video games are. Bi- I understand. There's a lot of competition from you know. You can you can go buy your video game hardware and software at Target, at Walmart, at Best Buy, any number of places you can go to. Yeah. You don't have to go to a specialty store anymore. But just to play devil's advocate for a moment, ga- video gaming is a big enough deal that surely, surely there's there's enough of a market out there to support at least one specialty chain. Why 100%. can't GameStop stay alive? They overstretched. That's the that's the that's the long and short of it, right? Like, they're, what does that mean? Overstretch? Too many locations? Victim, or something? I think they're a victim of their own success, right? Where I think you have so many Game Stops that then it starts to be that you, they, they stop bringing in because people start going digital, and then it's like, oh shit! Like we're overextended. We can't cover what we're doing, so they've right. closed stores. They've dry back. They're now they're bringing it. It's once the genie's out of the bottle, right? You can't just close stores and, and be, all right, now we're profitable again. I guess you could bring it out to very few locations, but that doesn't make any sense. Like eventually you get so big and you get so stretched out that you're, the cost of operating the business is so much that when it starts to fall, there's no way to make it up, I don't think. And that's why you're bringing in the collectibles and the Funko Pops and all this stuff. But that is, I, I, I don't mind being a looky-loo when we go to the mall or whatever to get some wild wings and we walk through, I, I walk through and I'm like, oh, I didn't see this pop. No, I didn't do that. I don't usually buy any of that. I think the last thing I bought at a GameStop was a, a toy for Patello, right? Like, right. And you're on to the next thing. Like, So the, there's two, the, it seems to me there's two things that can happen. The idea of GameStop ever... You know, if you look at some kind of chart of like GameStop's, you know, profitability and success yeah, or whatever, yeah. whatever its peak was, that's in the rearview mirror. Like, that's, it, GameStop's not going to grow. It's not going to get bigger. It's not going to go back to whatever its glory days were. One of two things is going to happen. It's either going to go completely into extinction or it will contract and find whatever the right size for its, for its business currently is yeah. and continue, but in a smaller form. Which, well, I mean, which one do you see is more likely? I think they're too, I think now that they're so big, it's a Toys R Us situation where I think they're seeing it. Yeah, just going to go. It, it, it's going to come fast. I think, I mean, it's to keep going this way the gamble now it for greg miller not a business professional doesn't have stock in anybody doesn't know how the stock market works is is it a good idea to get in and buy these shares right now in this in the as they're plummeting in the hopes they hang on long enough to be there for next gen when because they're, they're talking about new hardware sales being down and that being a huge problem for them right well like if gamestop I'm, can limp on to getting to playstation 5 xbox 2 whatever i i mean i don't know is, is there anything to back that up if you if you were to put a chart of like gamestop's financials up against a chart of like the next gen cycles when when a new gen comes i, I imagine you would but do you, do you see like gamestop business uptick when there's new heart and a new i don't have cycle? those charts available in myself i mean it seems you, you logical that you see at least like a little a little a little bump but maybe not enough to save the business but I don't know it wouldn't be enough to save the business but I think it would give that would be their next last gasp right of a way of like hey I bet shot I bet when people are going into the stores to buy PlayStation 5s and buy play, Xbox 2s that's when I think you're going to see the shares go back up and you could do it but it's the question of it's, is it going to continue it's sad because I do in a perverse way enjoy going to GameStop it's one of those places where you feel like yeah this is my place this is a, this is a shop that sells all the shit that I like I like video games yeah. like well we, you and I miss it because it used to be like the old days where we w- I, I remember before I know that GameStop is a chain, but when it was Funko Land and I would go in on lunch breaks at Walmart or when I was just it, there with my friends and just talk about video games right. with the clerk and just for hours. Right. And like you'd be playing the, something behind the, comic the book store. counter, playing something, challenge you to play in uh, you know, WCW, uh, NWO Revenge on 64. Like It was a cool way to talk and in exchange. Yeah, the same way comic book shops are now, right? Yeah, and I've had good experiences in GameStop. Me Gen- too. Generally, I find that the people that work behind the counter at GameStop are pretty knowledgeable. And they're into games. They're not just there to, to get a paycheck. 100%. I mean, obviously there too, but they, they're generally people that really like games who can answer your questions. If you try doing that at Target or Walmart oh, no, yeah, or Best Buy, lose, right? not, yeah. they don't know shit about the game. Some yeah. of them do. Some, but do. The, some of the guys that work in like the game section at Best Buy kind of, oh yeah, get this one, not that one. But it's one. the problem of, oh, I know games, I don't know TVs. Or I know right. TVs, I don't know games. Right. I know sound bars, I don't know that. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of, because again, you can always hang out in like the game section at Target, whatever. but it's not the same. Like no. walking into a game spot, uh, sorry, GameStop, kind of felt like one of those things that you did as as a video. I'm not, I'm already talking about it in the past tense. Like one of the things you did as well, a I mean, game. Like, like I- this is my place. These are my people. When that inevitably goes away, as I'm suggesting it will, what's left? 
Yeah. Like, where do you internet. where do you go? You just got to do it on the internet. You got to go on the message boards. I want to go kinda to funny. a real place. Kind of kind of funny live events. You know what I mean? Meet yeah, greets, I guess there's like always that. those. Yeah, no, uh, it's super sad, especially because you know when we broke out on our own, we started hosting stuff at the GameStop Managers uh, uh, Conference. Expo. Yeah, I've done one of those. Yeah, I did one of those and years like, ago. Hanging out with them and learning what how they do that, and they fly all the managers from all over the country to one place to teach them about games, and then talking to the managers themselves. Like, I left that place like. Man, GameStop gets a bad rap in a lot of respects. Like, don't get me wrong, they're a corporation. They're trying to get money and use games, all that jazz. But in terms of the employees working there, they all really fucking care. Yeah, they're all really about this, and the and the company is good to them. It seems for the most part for the people I was talking to. Yeah, sad. We'll see what happens. Number six, and finally on this fifty-three minute Roper report, it's a hap, well, it's a sad, happy one. Uh, Borderlands three. There's a Borderlands three weapon that's getting uh, dedicated to a terminal cancer patient. This is Charlie Hall over at Polygon. The team making Borderlands three, the next game in the much loved first person shooter franchise, took time out of its busy schedule to honor a very special fan. Trevor Eastman is a twenty six year old Borderlands fan recently diagnosed with stage four cancer of the esophagus, stomach, and liver. According to his doctors, he only has a year to live. He took to Reddit one month ago to ask the community to help him reach the developers with a special request. Quote, I've been a huge I've been a huge fan of Borderlands for a long time now, Eastman wrote, and I don't know if I'll live to see Borderlands 3. If there's any possible way that someone could find a way for me to be able to play it early, I would be forever great forever grateful. The team at Gearbox got the message and invited him up to the studio for some time with a special preview build. Eastman got to experience four hours of the game and was able to name a unique item in the game. The weapon, called the Compressing Trevenator, is a unique shotgun manufactured by Maliwan uh, that switches between cryo and fire type damage. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. It also contains a bit of description, t- a descriptive text stating in red letters, Trev is going to get you. The weapon will be available in the game when it launches on September 13th. I mean, it's it's tragic, but you know, I I, I always have mixed feelings when I read these stories because you f- obviously feel terribly for the yeah. for the person involved. Um, but you know, it's sweet when people do. A lot. It costs them nothing. It's just a nice thing to do. Sure. I, I yeah, thumbs up. Exactly, it's one of those cool things of again the people behind the games getting to connect with people and f- who play the games right and have meant so much to them and try to help each other out through obviously Borderlands as they try to I get actually, this game I actually done. Used, I, it, 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 one of one of the one of the very strange things about working at Lucasfilm for the time that I did was that I would get emails quite frequently from people saying I have cancer, I'm dying, I have cancer or I know someone I know, can you please, uh, you know, through your Lucasfilm connections, arrange yeah, yeah. for them to see the new Star Wars movie early? Because it's a thing that you see like uh, pretty much every Star Wars movie that happens now, there's some kind of story about how they brought in someone who might not otherwise live to see it, of course. to see it early. They made so a, we, a we, would movie, get, we, we would actually get requests for that all the time. Yeah. And, it's, and, it's, and it's so common that they, they have a special process within they would tell us like, if you get those emails, like don't reply to them directly, but like send them to this. But there's a whole system through which we facilitate that stuff because it's like it's a thing now. Yeah. And you know, again, it's terrible. But I, but I like the fact that people like Lucasfilm and Gearbox and companies like that are, you know, they they try to do what they can. Yeah. Try to do the right thing. Yeah. Uh, when I worked at IGN actually, and I would review video games, a lot of people there wished I'd get cancer in the comments, and I did. No, they must, they must have been thrilled. Maybe they, were, they got their <laughs> wish, just like Barrett. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you about our sponsors, Hims and Omaha Steaks. Uh, let's start with Hims. Nick and Andy noticed their hair was thinning, and they decided to do something about it. They went to 4 a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness, and more for men. Did you know that 66% of men lose their hair by age 35 or start to, at least? And once they start to notice, it can be too late. It's easier to keep the hair you have than replace the hair you've lost. And thanks to science, baldness can be optional. Hims connects you with real doctors and medical grade solutions to treat hair loss. Well known generic equivalents to name brand prescriptions to help you keep your hair. There's no steak oil pills, no gas station counter supplements. These are prescription solutions backed by science. You answer a quick few questions. Doctors review it and they can prescribe you products that are shipped directly to your door. My listeners get a trial month of Hims for just $5 today, right now, while supplies last. See the website for full details and safety information. This would cost hundreds if you went to a doctor or pharmacy. Go to forhims.com slash games daily. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash games daily. Forhims.com slash games daily. Next sponsor is Omaha Steaks. You know that I love Omaha Steaks. I sent them to my father. He liked them so much, he sent them back to me. This is a chance for you to start an endless cycle of steaks with a family member or yourself. 
No, 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 no. He just enjoyed his package. She <laughs> sent me just one. Send you the steak we just back. keep sending the same <laughs> Omaha steak over and over, back and back to each other. Uh, be like me, my dad, and order Omaha steaks. Uh, looking for an e- Are you looking for an affordable, easy way to stock up for summer grilling as well as a great gift for Father's Day? Think Omaha steaks. Omaha steaks is America's original butcher, making special occasions easier since 1917. Right now, Omaha steaks is giving a limited time Father's Day gift offer to my listeners. You can go to omahasteaks.com and enter the code KF Games in the search bar for 74% off the Father's Day Steak Fix Gift Package. It's a $235 value for just $59.99. You'll get two tender filet mignons, two bold top sirloins, two savory pork chops, four Omaha steak burgers, four massive gourmet jumbo franks, four crispy chicken fried steaks, all beef meatballs, four premium chicken breasts, four caramel apple tartlets for dessert, a packet of Omaha steaks signature seasoning, and you'll get four extra Omaha steak burgers for free. Again, order now and you'll get this exclusive Omaha Steaks Father's Day Steak Fix gift package valued at $235 for just $59.99. Just go to omahasteaks.com and type KF Games in the search bar. Don't wait. The offer ends soon. Go to omahasteaks.com, type KF Games in the search bar, and get the Father's Day Steak Fix gift package today. 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 Gary, I'm excited for my dad to send me uh, steaks the next time he wants to send me steaks. But my birthday's still so far away. If I wanted something more immediate, like, say, what was coming to the mom and grop shops? Where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts. That's us, each and every weekday. Yeah. As Divine Dios comes to play, uh, Xbox One and PC, my apologies. Just sleep, meditate, focus, and relax comes to PC. Suck it, Pokemon Sleep. You've been beat to the punch. Uh, card links, PC and Mac, and then Void Run on PC. New dates for you. Uh, Battlefield 5 is getting DLC. It reads like this. World War II rages on this year with four new maps as DICE announced Chapter 4, Defying the Odds, starting June 27th. Then... A rather, a rather large news story here that would have been in the Roper Report, but got bumped down here. Rocket League's announced Radical Summer. Radical Summer is a brand new 80s-themed in-game f- event for Rocket League. Beginning June 10th, Radical Summer takes place over nine weeks and celebrates iconic movies, television, and culture from the 1980s through the addition of limited-time game modes, new items, and two premium DLC car packs, Ghost Busters and Knight Rider. The event will roll out in three celebrations with new content available during each phase. Like past in-game events, players can earn cassettes by playing online matches that are then redeemed for various items for or from beloved 80s franchises. Uh, so yeah, 80s Blockbusters is June 10th to the, uh, July 1st. It's got the Ecto-1 car pack in it. It's also uh, The pack also includes uh, the Ecto-1 battle car, Ecto-1 wheels, proton packed boost, slime or topper, Ghostbusters player mantle, Ghostbusters avatar border, and the Stay Puff goal explosion, all for $199 or the regional equivalent. Uh, the first limited time game mode for Radical Summer is Ghost Hunt. In this spooky 3v3 mode, players must fire a proton stream to capture the ball and carry it to the opposing team's containment zone to score a goal. Uh, additional 80s franchises featured in the Blockbusters phase, as in as in game items for the event, are Back to the Future, E.T., The Goonies, and Karate Kid. Uh, then uh, the, there's a whole bunch more stuff happening, but we don't care because Ghostbusters, guys. I'm, Ghostbusters. Exci- I'm excited about uh, Kit. Okay, yeah, Kit, you, you're going to get your Knight Rider pack. That's uh, 80s television, July 22nd through the t- August 12th. Do you play uh, Rocket League? I played it a little bit. May- I mean, I like the idea of this 80s pack. It's very much my uh, my you know my wheelhouse, so maybe 100%. I'll give it a try. Dude, let's do it together. The Ghostbusters versus Kit? Yeah, well, All together. Right. We'll play together. Okay, but well, I'm, I have it on PlayStation, so we can play. I'm 100% in, because like, for real, I've always heard Rocket League's very attainable platinum. You seem to play it, and I always liked Rocket League when it launched. I was just bad at it, and so yeah, now I, I was got, never any good they got Ecto-1 in there? Let's go. You and right, me play? It. We'll okay, get some we'll best play. friends to play? 2v2, we'll do it. Done. In. That's right. Uh, we need two of you cowards to come play Gary and I on PlayStation. And later down the road, that. they've got Voltron, uh, the WWE. Dude, it's, it's a really cool 80s event. wrestlers, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, WWE, 80s wrestlers, there's beach ball modes, there's uh, spiked rush mode, there's all sorts of stuff happening here. You can go to Rocket League to find all about it. Oh, that's where I, I knew I had a GameStop question, I put it over here. I think we answered it on our own. Which means, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to squad up. This is where one of you writes in to patreon.com slash games. You give me your name, username, platform of choice, and why you need help in a game. I read it here. The best friends come and find you and everybody plays games together. Today, Dapper Steve with a PH needs help at Indie Pop. 
PopCon. That's right, a real IRL event. He wants to hang out with you. Hello there, Greg and Gary. I'm looking for some fellow best friends out there to hang out and talk games over a classic game of Hacky Sack at the Indie PopCon in Indianapolis, Indiana this weekend. For anyone unaware of what PopCon is, it's a three-day convention that covers everything from Star Wars to Star Trek, Game of Thrones to Doctor Who, and everything in between. One of the best thing, one of the things I enjoy most about this convention is the support for indie game developers. There is an area in the main hall dedicated to just them. I'll be there all three days, but I'm hoping Saturday, June 8th, around 6 p.m. Eastern, for about an hour or so, we could start up a game of Hacky Sack and talk about all the exciting E3C stuff coming up. Don't worry if you've never played Hacky Sack or not very good, because Hacky Sack is really just about standing in a circle, talking, and hanging out while having something else to focus on and take out any of the awkward silence. If the weather is nice out, you can find us just north of the main entrance on South Capitol Avenue. If it's raining, we'll probably be somewhere inside next to the escalator on the north end of the building by West Maryland Street. Talk about back to the 80s. Hacky Sack. I didn't Ladies know anyone still did that. That's awesome. If you want to meet Dapper Steven with a PH at Indie PopCon, go play some Hacky Sack with him. I hope that works out. Nothing would make me happier than after this weekend he posts a bunch of pictures I, of I him want playing photos. Hacky Sack with some best friends. I want boomerangs and photos to me and Gary on Saturday if you're out there playing Hacky Sack together. Uh, Gary, we ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames and podcast services uh giant robot gaming says ipad os uh with dualshock 4 support is not available to the general public until fall uh i strongly suggest against installing developer builds of both ios 13 and ipad os blah blah, blah. thank I'm, you uh, the confusion continues i'm sure you covered this the other day when it was announced but i was very glad to see um, uh, xbox uh one and dualshock 4 controller support coming to apple tv as well which is great exactly i can actually play those games now. yeah your iphone your ipad and your, yeah that's great uh nanobiologist writes in and says um Marriott, there are actually technically seven Arkham games with Arkham VR and Arkham Origins Blackgate and Arkham City Lockdown. Fuck off. Whoa! Wow! Uh, Cam Konex says, Pokemon has clarified the following on their Twitter. Uh, Dynamax can only take place at specific locations, likely raids and gym battles. The encounters aren't random. You see an exclamation point in the grass and go to it, as well as roaming overall Pokemon encounters. Great. Um, Capitalist Pig says, uh, re the game stop stock. Uh, typically, GameStop stock has a massive bump on or about on any major console release. Okay. Early 2007, uh, late 2013, for example. Yeah, it makes so sense. So it stands to reason the next yeah. generation would give them a shot in the arm. That's it. It's like, it's like in a video, it's like in a, in, a, in a game or something where like, you've got to get to that next checkpoint, but you're desperately running out of gas. It's yeah, like, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. can I get there? Can I get there? And it's like, oh, I just get the new generation. We get Boom. another, Done. gets me in business for another gonna year. Gets me saved for a little bit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily, and boy, howdy, was it a good one. If you like it, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, like us on podcast services. If you listen on one or watch on the other, do it to the other. You know what I mean? Go back and forth with it. Maybe consider going to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Be part of the show. Hang out. Just give us a buck. Say, hey, you're doing a good job. Catch the new video game club about Katana Zero. Is that up yet? Uh, it's been up. Okay. Well, I'm just making sure it's up. Yeah. yeah. A lot of stuff happening. Sorry. Uh, uh, remember, ladies and gentlemen, I am off to LA to get ready for EA Play on Saturday and Ghostbusters Fan Fest on Saturday. If you're around for either of them or watching live, thank you so much. Remember, then Sunday starts all the E3 coverage proper, even though I guess technically it starts tomorrow with the Stadio Watch Along here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games, later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Basically, what I'm saying is it's E3, it's crazy. Get strapped in. When are you leaving? I leave tonight. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So who's hosting uh, t tomorrow and Friday? Tomorrow it's Tim and Andy. Friday it's Fran in GameSpots. Mike Mahardy. Okay. Yeah. You should come in and heckle them. No, I, 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 let, them, okay, I let them do their business. Okay, fine. Well, you know, just saying. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes I go in the chat and I give them some you shit. You should come by for the watch longs. Just wander for the in. What? The watch longs for the E3 press conferences. Oh. Just walk in, drink your LaCroix, be like, nah, I don't like it. Leave. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.